Hey there, and welcome to MTG Meow, Magic Enjoyed Other Ways. Meow! I'm Scott. And I'm Abby. And today we'll be doing a sealed deck build of the Dreamscape Custom Magic Set. Hi, here, hi. here at Planesculptors.net. If you want to do your own sealed or draft of the set, the link is in the description, so be sure to check it out. But Abby and I have done some exhibition games of the set to kind of get familiar with the themes and the commons and the mechanics and whatnot. And uh, now we're ready to do our first sealed. Let's do so it. So we're going to go ahead and open six boosters of Dreamscape. And just real quick before we get into it, like, what did we learn from the exhibition matches, Abby? Well, we learned that aggressive decks are good. Yeah, you you sl kind of slaughtered me in the first game, and then the second kind game, of. And then in the second game, it was a little bit more close. When I got my engines online, it was fine. But I think just being aggressive. And having Dreamwalk creatures also seem very good because mm. the Dreamwalk creatures, mo a lot of the time they're just unblockable because your opponent isn't always going to have tapped creatures. And if you you're, might sometimes be forcing your opponent to make bad attacks into your own creatures just so that they can have tapped creatures to block with. So mm. Dreamwalk, so one, I want to be, if we can, I want to be aggressive with our build. And two, or at least proactive. Yeah. And two, the Dreamwalk creatures also seem very strong. So, but... If we see any cool graveyard synergies and whatnot, we're not going to pass up on something sweet. Yeah, of course. So, so we have our six boosters ready, so why don't we go ahead and open up our sealed pool. Let's do it! Alright, so let's go ahead and start off by sorting by rarity, so we can see what kind of bombs we're working with. Yes. Alright, so we have Visions of Paradise. <laughs> this is kind of the, the alternate win junk rare of the set. You can tap an untapped permanent, put a Utopia counter on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, it has 50 or more Utopia counters, you win the game. Mm, okay. That's kind of, yeah. Tarmavor, which is like a Tarmogoyf, but it's equal to, it's a double Tarmogoyf, equal, its power and toughness are equal to twice the number of oh, that's amazing. types in all graveyards. So if you have a lot of like self-mill or ways to get seven graveyards, it could be pretty good. Mori's Summoner, okay, two mana, two, two prowess. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create a one, one red elemental. All right, whatever. Earth Flare deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. That seems very good. Mm -hmm. Search your library for up to X basic land cards and put them into your hand. Oh, wow. that's That seems very strong. So it's kind of like deals X damage divided as you choose and you draw X cards. Just those X cards happen to be basic lands from your deck. So kind of not bad. It gets those lands out of your deck. Let's ramp some more. So yeah, it's really interesting. It's good in the, very good in the early game and the late game. So that seems very good. Yeah. Cognitive Violation, search target opponent's library for a non-land card and exile it. You can cast that for as long as it remains exiled. You can spend mana as any color. All right, then they shuffle the library. Sure, seems fine. Mm. Um, and... Amnizoa. And... and Amnizoa. Uh, sure. It's a flying jellyfish. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard, copy that spell. You can choose new targets for the copy. Wow. That's, hey, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. So it seems like we kind of... Just looking at the rares, we kind of have a green, good green rare, good... Decent red rare, and then a good green and red, so we have some good green red stuff, and we have a okay blue black rare, we kind of get like the best card from our opponent's deck, and then we have a good blue rare here. So we kind of have blue black and red green. But let's just sort by color, and take a look at the uh, the rest of the colors, just to see how they fill out with the commons and uncommons. Yeah. I'm kind of leaning toward the, uh, the green and red one, though, just because that seems nice and... Uh, Aggressive. Nice and juicy. And I'm always, I'm always leaning towards green and red, so... Alright, so let's see. The, let's check out white first. We have our stupid rare. Serene Dream Hunter. Yeah, this wasn't as great as I thought it was in the white aggressive. The white blue tempo deck didn't turn out quite as good as I thought, so we'll see. Mm. Recumbent Bliss. Enchanted Creature can attack or block. You can gain one life. Alright, that's a decent removal spell. We have two of them. Purified Visionary. You gain three life. Uh, there's like a gain three life sub-theme in here where like some things trigger if you gain three life during the turn, so oh, we'll have to keep that in mind. Yeah. We have two of those, Lost in the Moment, yep. Life's Grander, okay, another one. Dusk Watcher, okay, more tap creature synergies. Just a vanilla 3-2, another vanilla 3-2. Okay, so white is fine. We have two Recumbent Bliss, which is decent removal. It's like a better, well, it's not a better arrest, but it's like a better pacifism. Yeah. And we have Purified Visionary, so we'll have to keep that in mind. So white seems okay. Let's check out blue. Winged Reminiscence is pretty good. Yeah. It's just, you know, you can cast it early. It's a 3-3 flyer. It's always decent. Think twice is fine. Subconscious Recall is good when he gets off. Eight premonitions kind of a lot. If you yeah, eight it. is kind of a lot, but if you have mill, then you're all set. If exactly. If you can mill yourself, then it's not bad. Serpent of Aisha. Again, if you can mill yourself, decent. Mind Adrift. 
Okay, sure. Mental inertia, yeah, it was okay. Lethargy, draw and visionary, good way to self mill. Mm -hmm. Introspection, good for tempo deck. Inspired researcher killed me that one. Yeah, that was good. Enter the dreamscape, so you can return a creature you control and, or don't control or both. Got two of those. Dreamscape and Twiner. That was an okay card during in the blue um, blue white tempo deck. Counter a spell, exile it, sure. Cyclic knowledge, okay. You can put an instant or sorcery card into your library gains premonition got two of those it's kind of yeah. expensive for what it does though yeah i remember when i had that in my hand for one of the um games that we played it just it was in my hand the whole game yeah never mm -hmm. cast it yeah there's no point in using it all right creative revelation sure and our rare okay so blue also seems kind of fine there's nothing fantastic i mean there's serpent of aisha and like subconscious recall and things like that but they're not like making me really want to play blue if you know yeah what I mean. all right let's take a look at black we have, how do you pronounce this again, Abby? Achilles. Touch of Achilles. Good removal. A little expensive, but whatever. Shrouded Rider gains Death Touch. Sure. Shadowy Blessing. Okay. Uh, Resurgent Agony. All right. Whatever. We just have a Premonition 5 5 5. That's fine. Reap the Dreamer. Decent removal. Moonlight Guide. Ah, so here's some of that gain three life synergy. So at the beginning of each end step, if you gain three more life, target creature gets minus three, minus three. So oh. Oh, that's a pretty go. good synergy with Life's Grander. Uh, not Life's Grander, but the... The Purified Visionary, exactly. yeah. Exactly. So you basically play... If these two are out, you pay two and a white, and during you know your end step, you can give something minus three, minus three every turn. So pretty good to know. Yeah. Uh, Maddening Revelation, sure. Hope Slicer, sure, it's fine. Ghoulish Network, another way to gain three life, just by exiling something. We have two of those. Final Awakening, a Fetid Awakening. <laughs> and yeah, that's not bad, okay. You can attack with all your guys and play this post-combat and yeah. hopefully kill some things. Dementia Shrieker, sure, and Cruel Worship. Okay, so Black seems okay. The only, I mean, I like Reap the Dreamer, and I like Moonlight Guide, mm. but other than that, and Touch of Achilles, other than that, it's kind of meh. Yeah, it doesn't seem like to have a whole lot of flavor over it here. Yeah. In the green, or not green, but in the Black department. All right, so let's look at Red. We have Sting of the Past, deals one damage to target player, and E to target creature that player controls. Okay, that's a little stingy, I suppose. Yeah. Sparkly poke, poke. Sparkly Rekiri, and you can sacrifice it, add some mana. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. We have yeah. two of those. Huh. Raving Spree, decent removal. We saw during the games. Nightfire Brute, again, if you have a very aggressive, it's not bad. Maury's Chosen, Dreamwalk Prowess, it's not bad. And, and, as a 3 1, it might seem like, eh, it's not really going to get in for damage, but as Dreamwalk. So unless your opponent has a tap creature, then this guy's getting in. Yep. Maury Summoner, that's a fine rare. Manic Researcher's pretty good, actually. Cause... Yeah, these are all cards that were in my. Um, my... Than the, the game that we just played. Right, in your blue red Aisha deck. Yeah. And this guy's pretty good because, you know, four mana, two, three, prowess, and he gives you a card back from your graveyard, and it's like, yeah, it's random, but chances are you can manipulate this pretty well, where if, if he's in your opening hand, you can only cast, like, just cast your Raving Spree, and then, hey, you only have one instant or sorcery in your graveyard, and then that's what you get back with this guy. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good removal spell, so he seems pretty good. We have Hysteria Mori, 5 mana 7 1, sure. Frenzied Ocelot, gains all your creatures double strike. Okay, that's not bad. And that's a Premonition one as well, so that's pretty Yeah, so you cast it on turn 2 or 3 with Premonition, and then you get a big army, and then boom, you can just get in for damage. Flash of Inspiration, good removal. Flare of Sensation, yeah, just an okay trick. We have our Destiny Crusher, a Charred Visionary. Uh, blinding finesse, okay, and Alt Alt Altor Prodigy, okay. So Altoid Prodigy. Altoid Prodigy, <laughs> such fresh breath. Yes. Okay, so red seems pretty. I mean, I would say that red so far seems like the best color that I've seen, just because we have you know decent removal, we have good dream walk guys, and we have some and with like our manic research, we even have some good uh, card advantage. So mm -hmm. you know, not bad, not bad. All right, so take a look at green wild flourishing. I really like this card. Because just both halves are pretty good. I mean, if you get to, like, five, six mana, it's a good deal. And once you're beyond that, especially if you've happened to ramp a lot with something like Earth Flare, it's just your opponent's going to have a tough time dealing with, with a two seven sevens or two eight eights or something. Yeah, it's, it's a straight bomb. <laughs> okay, fair enough. We also have Whispering Beige, which costs one less for each tap creature you control. So <laughs> I thought that said Whispering Babe. Whispering, ooh, <laughs> hey babe. Hey babes. Babe only speaks with wisdom, but few appreciate being told their food. <laughs> All right, we have Unrecognized Horizons. Yeah, that's fine. Good for um, getting stuff in your graveyard, getting some lands. We have two of those. Tarmivore, good rare. So Tarmivore works well with Unrecognized Horizons, get some card types in our graveyards. Yeah, Tarmivore seems really good. Somnosaurus Force, I was pretty impressed with this. It's 
the big dream walk guys especially seem good because you know your opponent might be able to attack with their little guys and keep them tapped yeah. or keep their or tap like these where's the uh tap these guys with their abilities mm -hmm. but those guys are not going to be able to block um somnus force force and even if they do he has trample so he's getting in for something so yeah yeah delver was actually pretty good if you're doing a lot of self mill yeah you did you, i noticed you did use use delver a lot once i finally figured out that you don't sacrifice it you exile it from your graveyard yes <laughs> primal visionary put a plus one plus one counter on it that's that's actually not bad all these ones that have abilities that you can tap them are pretty good because even though you can only activate it when you can cast a sorcery you're gonna know if you're gonna want to use it or not oh and, yeah and then you can just uh, be able to block your opponent's dreamwalk creatures by having them tapped. This might be, a, they don't seem too great, but they might be an inclusion. So, yeah. We have Noctani Rememberist. Elemental creatures you control get plus and plus on. Ooh, that's interesting. So, this makes elementals. That's a snake. That's a Lurgoyf. This is an elemental. All right, so to, oh, this is an elemental Ooh. too. We have two Gardener of Wisdoms Ooh, and an Abundant Growth. Wow, so green also seems pretty good. I mean, mm. I was, I like a lot of stuff in our green. Green and red seem to be. Pretty good to me. All right, let's take a look at what we have over here. We have a blue red, blue red, blue red, blue green. So we could easily go like red, blue, green colors if that's what we want. We could. We definitely could. We have a meditation prism. Being of your upkeep, tap any number of untapped creatures you control. Put a plus one, plus one on each of those creatures. Whoa. That's kind of like a bomb. Whoa. Am I reading it? At the beginning of your upkeep, tap any number of untapped creatures you control. So yeah, I mean, you're going defenses down, basically, but you get, like, a free plus one, plus one on all your creatures. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, like, well, the creatures that you tap. Yeah, um, and, yeah mean, and you don't even have to tap them is the thing. Like, if you don't want to do it's not like you have to tap them. You can just not if you don't want to. Mm, so this, to me, this seems like a card, like, it's either going to be really, really good and it's going to, like, really blow up the board or it's going to like, just be awful and just sit there. <laughs> all right. So yeah. you'd, have, you'd have to try it to see. We also have a dream portal. Sacrifice the draw card. That, if, you're only, if you're only playing one or two colors, then that's a good inclusion. And mm -hmm. we have cultist dagger. Beginning of your upkeep, you lose two life. A quick creature gets plus two plus one life. Like, oh, that's kind of cool. So it's like you're, you have to, as long as you have creatures out to do your bidding for your cult, you're going to stay alive. But if yeah. you don't, then you're in trouble. Huh. That's all a good right. flavor right there. Yeah, good stuff. So... What do you think looking at these our colors so far, Abby? I mean, honestly, in my opinion, I agree with uh, we going towards a, a, a red, green, blue type of deck. Um, mm -hmm. Those seem to be our strongest colors here. We, I mean, white is kind of weak, black is kind of meh. Um, I mean, and you really can't go wrong putting three colors together in a sealed pool, so. <laughs> well, we do have a decent amount of mana fixing. Yeah, we have, and we have a poop ton of mana fixing, so that All helps right. us So well. what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get rid of the cards that I'm not happy about playing from each color so we can take a closer look. Yeah. All right, so now we've moved basically all the cards we're not super happy about playing over here to the sideboard, and we're left with the cards that we really like. So mm -hmm. let's take a look at the blue, I mean, the, the white and black cards. I really like the cool um, if you gain three life synergies, but we only have Moonlight Guide as a payoff for that. Yeah, we don't really have a whole lot to be um, playing that. Yeah, and the only other reason to really go white would be for Recumbent Bliss, and the only reason to go black would be for, like, Touch of Achilles or Reap the Dreamer. But I think we have enough decent removal spells in in red that we don't really need to go those colors and I'm just happier with our red overall so yeah think, red is just infinitely better so, so yeah I think we're just gonna have to unfortunately say no to white and black this time around yeah. so now the next question is I really like our red and I really like our green so what what would we what would we gain by splashing blue because we have three red blue and one green blue land mm -hmm. that also put the top card of our library into our graveyard which is nothing to sneeze at when we have two gardeners of wisdoms and we have a tarmivore which want cards in our graveyard yeah you know? and also the delver so we if we could splash blue easily then what cards here do we want to potentially put in our deck so let's see here, we have a 3-3 three, three flyer, eh, yeah, that's kind of whatever. Think Twice is kind of whatever. Subconscious Recall is, eh, I don't want to really put any double blue spells in our blue deck if we're splashing. Like, Serpent of Ice is good, but we're going to be making big green guys already, so we don't really mm, need it. Yeah. Drell and Visionary, I mean, we have a couple self-mill synergies, but I think just having, like, unrecognized horizons and just having the lands is going to be enough. We're not, yeah. like, super self-mill, like, in the exhibition matches. Yeah, I don't think we really need the Visionary, and I don't think we need the Researcher either. Yeah, um, the Researcher is okay. I mean, it's a decent blocker, but, again, we have enough removal already. I mean, that, we'll put that in the maybe pile. Yeah. So. And Amenda... Anamnizoa. Anamnizoa Anam is actually pretty cool, because if we could double Wild Flourishing or double Raven uh, yeah. Spirit or whatever... <laughs> 
Where's the thing that just deals like five damage? Oh, yeah, double flash of inspiration. Yeah. Boom. Just, you know, kill one creature, then kill another. I mean, exactly. That, like that, that's, seems, that seems pretty good. That's a pretty strong case to keep it. So I think, yeah, let's get rid of these guys. I'll keep the Inspired Researcher in yeah, the maybe. Yeah, because, maybes. I mean, yeah, it's a good maybe because you can't do the damage with it unless you have red anyway. So. Right. So I'll get rid of the Cognitive Violation. We don't have any way to play black. And now let's sort by converted mana cost. So it's, we should also note that we have 34 cards currently in the deck, so that means we have to make about 10, 11 cuts. Yeah. And But also one, two, three, four, five of them are currently land. I don't think we can afford to play Dream Portal, because it's a colorless land, we're playing three colors. Yeah, it's not so yeah, good. Just, I mean, it does have draw, kind of. It does, yeah, I don't think we're going to really need to worry about that too much. We have ways to dig through our deck and get things back, so. Yeah. And honestly, and right off the bat, I would go for the Cultist Dagger, because we have we don't really have any artifact synergy. It doesn't, you mean it, get rid of it? Yeah, get rid of it, because I mean, it's mm. just it's just kind of like, it's just a piece of flavor metal, essentially. <laughs> like. Yeah, I'm not too impressed. If we a lot of like little things then maybe sure yeah so we are 33 minus 4 that's 29 so we need to make about six cuts so let's just take a look at what we have we got unrecognized horizons which i actually like because it helps us get our lands that we need it helps gives us do something early put stuff in our graveyard for um tarmivore and for a gardener of wisdom exactly, so exactly. i think that's pretty good so may delver i like that when we have a lot of really good big things so that way we can get it back and we also have good self mill so it's mm -hmm. not the greatest card but I think it's we'll keep it in for now. Yeah. Inspired researcher, uh, it's it's in the it's in the maybe we should cut pile. Blinding finesse. It just seems like, I maybe we just won't be aggressive enough for it because it gives a creature plus two plus zero oh, and also gives it uh, first strike if you cast a non-creature spell this turn. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's usually best if you have it on if you can combine it with instance so that way you can surprise your opponent. But I just I think. Maybe we just don't need it, because all of our guys are going to be hopefully big enough already, because we're going to be, you know, beefing them up with um, our prism and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, but it's just, it's, a van it's one of those vanilla pump spells, yeah. you know, we don't really need it. Abundant Growth seems great. We're yeah. three colors, draws us a card at worst, so great. Wild Flourishing, yep. Sting of the Past. Sting of the Past seems kind of weak, actually. Just yeah. We could put that in the sideboard if our opponent has a lot of one... One ones or whatnot. It does have flashbacks. I mean, maybe that's a plus, but it's, yeah, we it don't just really have any flashback synergies. Though. Yeah, we don't, and it doesn't really it doesn't do enough damage to make it worth it. I guess. So we also have Nightfire Brute, who gives a uh, power equal to the number of tap creatures. Hmm, are we gonna be aggressive enough for that? Well, that that is a synergy with the uh, prism. That isn't a. That is true. We can tap any number of creatures that we want, and then we can just make our Nightfire Brute as big as we want. So we'll keep it in for now. Yeah, that's an interesting synergy right so there. So Mori Summoner. That just seems fine. I mean, if we can beef him up, then we just get a lot of one ones, and that's a lot of guys to make our dude even better. And then mm -hmm. we can make the elementals even bigger with our prisms. Exactly. Right. Flare of Sensation, that's just an okay trick. We'll put that in the maybe. Earth Flare seems fantastic. Uh, Mendezo is the reason we're splashing blue. Just for fun. We'll see how it works out. If it's yeah. bad, then maybe we'll get rid of it, but... Charred Visionary, that's just, you know, he seems fine as a way to deal damage and just having a way to always be guaranteed to have a guy back to block uh, Dreamwalk creatures. Yeah. Also we can tap him if we need to to make this guy bigger. So we'll keep him in for now. Yeah, that seems pretty handy, actually. Meditation Prism, good. Mori's Chosen, whatever. Naktani, Rememberist. We have a couple elementals. I mean, yeah. this guy this guy makes elementals, and we have an elemental here, and he's also a 3-2 by himself. I mean, he's okay. He's not fantastic. I'm not saying he's fantastic, but he's it's okay. It's worth hanging on to, though. Raving Spree is good. Removal, Destiny Crusher, sure. More Researcher, Primal Visionary. Yeah, these guys just seem good as, you know, just get big kind of dudes. Mm -hmm. Tarmvor, sure. Flash of Inspiration, Garden of Wisdom. These are all our big guys that come out at the end. So Frenzied Onslaught. Hmm. Creatures you control gain double strike until end of turn. That seems pretty good. It does, but... And we, it's a premonition card. But, well, we don't have any premonition synergies. I'm just going to get rid of these guys right off the bat. So we have one, two, three, four. So now it's 25. So we still need to make about two cuts. I mean, we do have a lot of... I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to give our five, four and our, like, whatever, how big these guys are going to be with trample. I'd love to give them double strike. But... I just don't think that's going to be necessary. Because we're not really a super go-wide strategy with a lot of little things that would benefit right. from Double Strike. We're right. more of a have a couple, like, five, five, six, sixes, seven, sevens in play, you know? Yeah. And if unless they have Trample, like Somnosaurus, giving them Double Strike doesn't really mean yeah, much. Yeah, so maybe it would be a good, a good sideboard card if you needed it. Yeah. All right, and then we have Whispering Beish, which does cost eight. But we, have, we could potentially have a lot of tapped creatures, so it might cost less. 
but is that really necessary or are we, well, o- yeah. or are we okay with having these guys as our top end? I mean, mm-hmm. I'm all for fatties, so <laughs> I mean, like, I have right, well, no opposition well, We're down to, to 24, so the question is, is there one more card we can cut? Oh. Um, so how many creatures do we have currently? We have one, two, three, four, we'll say, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, so we have a good amount of creatures. Yeah. Hmm. And we also want to have a decent amount of instant or sorceries. Oh, oh my god, you guys have probably been yelling at me this whole time. Aminazoa only casts an instant or sorcery from your graveyard. Oh! Uh, so we could. So, dang. so we'd flash back on this guy thing and copy it. We, I mean, flashbacking while flourishing would be good. Um. Yeah. Well, Might sorry, I'm in his own. Yeah, it sucks. Going. So that means we get rid of our blue splash. RTFC. Yeah, jeez, <laughs> for real. Oh, All right, so we're down yeah. to 23. But and now we're just a straight red-green deck. So is there anything we want to bring? I mean, we could maybe bring back in that land that let us draw a card. Where'd that go? Ah, yeah, Dream Portal right here. So maybe we could bring Dream Portal back in if we're only going to be, and especially if we have, like, all this mana fixing already. Yeah, might as well. I mean, it's good for draw and it gets stuff in your graveyard, kind of, so, you know. It does get a land. It gets a land in your graveyard, yeah, so that pumps everything else. Tarmivore. Exactly. Um, Yes, sorry for not reading the card, but, you know, we're learning. We're learning the set. Yeah, yeah. It's a new experience every week. (laughs) I don't think there's really much else I'd want to bring in, and there's no real other reason to want to splash blue. I mean, we could bring in, like, Subconscious Recall, but again, that's double blue, and if we can't suspend it or premonition it early, then that kind of sucks. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I think I'm good with where we are right now. So, cool. I like this deck where we are right now. So we'll just keep this as it is, 20, 23 cards plus land. So what we'll do is I will play this deck. Okay. I will add some basic lands, some forests and mountains, and then Abby and I will make another sealed deck using a different seal pool, and that will be Abby's deck, and then we'll smash them against each other, <gasps> and we'll see what happens. Sounds good. See you then. See you then.